All right, so uh, today let's dive into something uh, pretty mind blowing. The timeline for AI becoming like super intelligent, you know, like that kind of AI we always see in sci fi movies. But in real life this time. Yeah, what's really got everyone talking is that this prediction isn't coming from like some random forum or something. This is coming from Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. Exactly. So we have this article from Tech Radar where Altman is talking about, you know, reflecting on like nine years of OpenAI. And he's making some pretty bold predictions about what's next for AI. So think of it this way. Imagine you're uh, you're prepping for a meeting about the future of AI, like a really high stakes meeting. How would you even begin to sum up this article? What are the most important things to like remember from it? Well, first off, Altman predicts that we'll reach artificial general intelligence, AGI, like yeah. true super intelligence yeah. this year. 2025. This year. Wow. Yeah. Which is way sooner than a lot of other experts are predicting. Seriously, that's a huge. Yeah, it is a huge deal. And he seems pretty sure about it. He even says, we are now confident we know how to build AGI as we have traditionally understood it. Hmm. As we have traditionally understood it. Yeah, that phrase. Yeah. As we have traditionally understood it. It's really interesting, right? Yeah, it almost sounds like he's hinting at like maybe a whole new type of AGI. Something beyond what we've even imagined. Yeah, it's a good possibility. And then he goes on to say, that the first AI agents will be joining the workforce also in 2025. And this could like dramatically change how companies operate. So we're not just talking about AI writing emails or scheduling meetings here. We're talking about AI actually doing like substantial work. So what kind of jobs are we even talking about here? Oh, think roles that involve a lot of data crunching, spotting patterns, maybe even some creative tasks. Mm -hmm. Things like, you know, analyzing financial markets, designing new products, even writing code. And this kind of ties into, you know, that fear that a lot of people have mm -hmm. about AI taking over jobs. Yeah, for sure. That's definitely a big concern. But are we really talking about AI replacing like entire job categories this quickly? <laughs> well, it's hard to say for sure, but it's, it's definitely something to think about. I mean, think about it. If AI can analyze data and make decisions yeah. faster and more accurately than humans, what happens to the people who currently do those jobs? Right. And this prediction of AGI in 2025, it's not just Altman's opinion, right? There are other people who see this happening soon, too. Oh, absolutely. Alan Thompson, he's an AI expert yeah. and former Mensa International Chairman. He actually runs this website called Conservative Countdown to AGI. And after Altman's comments and the release of NVIDIA Cosmos, he actually bumped his countdown up to 88 percent complete. NVIDIA Cosmos. What is that? Some kind of spinous program for robots. Well, it kind of is like that. It's software from NVIDIA uh -huh. that creates this virtual world uh -huh. for training humanoid robots. So instead of having to build expensive physical prototypes, developers can test out different robot designs and train them to do all sorts of complex tasks uh -huh. all within this virtual environment. OK, so if I'm understanding this right, NVIDIA Cosmos could be how we get robots that can actually like work alongside us in the real world not just in a computer simulation. Exactly. And it could speed up the development of these robots tremendously. It's like having a fast forward button for robotics. So we've got this like mind blowing prediction of super intelligence arriving this year, robots potentially joining the workforce. But I feel like there's like a human story here too. You know, Altman's been on quite a journey with OpenAI. Definitely. The article talks about the last nine years being like a wild ride for him. Rewarding, yeah. fun, exhausting, stressful. He even says that the last two were especially unpleasant. Unpleasant. That's putting it mildly. I mean, there was that whole thing about him being fired unexpectedly oh. on a video call while he was in Vegas. Can you imagine getting that kind of news on vacation? It sounds like something out of a movie, right? Yeah. But putting the drama aside for a moment, I think it's interesting to see how Altman's experiences have shaped OpenAI's path. So beyond the drama then... What are some of the key takeaways from Altman's reflections on the past nine years? Well, he specifically mentions ChatGPT's massive impact. He actually calls it the spark that ignited the AI revolution. Almost overnight, he says, AI development has taken many twists and turns and we expect more in the future. It's been fun watching a steady stream of research miracles occur and a lot of naysayers have become true believers. It really is amazing how ChatGPT went from, you know, a relatively unknown tool to this global phenomenon. It really captured the public's imagination and made people start thinking about the potential of AI in a whole new way. So with ChatGPT being such a success then, what's next for OpenAI? What's their main focus now? Well, according to Altman, 
They're yeah. shifting their focus yeah. beyond chat GPT right. and toward achieving super intelligence. He says, with super intelligence, we can do anything else. Super intelligent tools could massively accelerate scientific discovery and innovation and in turn massively increase abundance and prosperity. Wow, that's a pretty grand vision of the future. Almost sounds too good to be true, right? It definitely does. And I think that's what makes this so important to think about. Is this utopian vision realistic or are there potential downsides that we need to consider? That's a good point. It's easy to get caught up in all the excitement, but we do need to be realistic about the risks, too. Absolutely. And I think that's a great segue into the next part of our deep dive. We've talked about the predictions and, and the technology, but now let's explore the potential consequences of all this. Yeah. Both good and bad. What does a world powered by superintelligence actually look like? And what does it mean for us as individuals? Okay, so we've talked about this potentially huge shift, you know, with superintelligence maybe arriving this year. But now I kind of want to shift gears a bit and think mm. about what that world actually looks like. It's kind of both exciting and a little bit scary, you know? Yeah, yeah I totally get that. It's like we're on the verge of something totally transformative, mm. but we don't know if it's going to be amazing or terrifying. Mm. Or maybe a bit of both. Exactly. And I think that's why it's so important to be having these conversations now. Before it's too late, we need to be prepared, you know, not just in terms of technology, but also ethically and socially. I agree. We need to be thinking about the potential consequences of all this, both good and bad. If super intelligence is as powerful as Altman claims, it could have like a profound impact on every aspect of our lives. So let's talk about some of those potential impacts then. What are some things that could change if superintelligence really does become a reality this year? Well, one area where we could see significant changes is in the realm of scientific discovery. Imagine AI that can analyze these massive data sets, identify patterns that we might miss, even come up with hypotheses and experiments that we haven't even thought of. <laughs> it could revolutionize fields like medicine, material science, energy production, the possibilities are kind of endless. So we're talking about AI not just assisting scientists, but actually becoming a kind of scientific partner, accelerating the pace of discovery exponentially. Exactly. And it's not just about science either. Superintelligence could also have a huge impact on areas like manufacturing, transportation, even art and entertainment. Imagine AI that can design and build products with incredible efficiency, create personalized transportation systems that optimize traffic flow or even compose symphonies and generate like stunning visual art. It's almost overwhelming to think about all the possibilities, but of course, with all this potential comes potential risks, right? Earlier, we talked about AI agents joining the workforce. What happens to the people whose jobs those AI agents take over? Yeah, that's a crucial question and one that we need to address head on. It's likely that some jobs will become obsolete, just like they have throughout history yep. as technology has advanced. But it's also likely that new jobs will be created, jobs that we can't even imagine right now. So it's not a simple equation of robots taking all the jobs, but more of a shift in the types of jobs that exist. Right. And we need to be prepared for that shift. We need to be thinking about things like retraining programs, education systems that focus on developing skills that are complementary to AI and social safety nets to support people who are displaced by these changes. So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about how we adapt as a society to these changes. Absolutely. And it's not just about jobs either. There are also these broader societal impacts to consider. For example, how will superintelligence affect our relationships with each other? Will it make us more connected or be more isolated? And that's a really interesting question. On the one hand, AI could help us communicate and collaborate in ways we never thought possible. But on the other hand, it could also lead to echo chambers and filter bubbles where we're only exposed to information that confirms our existing biases. Exactly. And then there's the question of access. Who will have access to these powerful AI tools? Will it be evenly distributed or will it further concentrate power and wealth in the hands of a select few? That's a huge concern. We need to ensure that the benefits of superintelligence are shared widely not just hoarded by a small elite. Absolutely. And that brings us back to the importance of ethical considerations. You know, we need to be thinking about how we develop and deploy superintelligence in a way that aligns with our values and promotes human flourishing. So it's not just about building the most powerful AI. It's about building AI that's also beneficial to humanity. Precisely. We need to ensure that superintelligence is used for good, not for harm. And that's a challenge that will require collaboration between technologists, ethicists, right. policymakers, and society as a whole. 
It sounds like we're talking about a huge shift in how we think about technology, its role in society, mm -hmm. and our responsibility in shaping its development. I think that's exactly right. We're entering a new era, one where the lines between humans and machines are becoming increasingly blurred, and we need to be prepared for the challenges and opportunities that come with that. It's definitely a lot to think about, but before we get too deep into the philosophical implications of all this, I want to bring it back to something a bit more concrete. Remember, we're imagining you're prepping for a meeting about AI's future. What are some like specific, actionable takeaways you can bring to that meeting based on what we've discussed so far? That's a great point. It's easy to get lost in the big picture stuff, but ultimately we need to be able to translate these abstract concepts mm -hmm. into practical actions. So here are a few key takeaways. I'm all ears. First, start thinking about how AI could impact your specific industry or field. What are the tasks that could be automated? What new opportunities might emerge? So do your research. Understand the potential disruptions and opportunities specific to your area of expertise. Yeah, look. What else? Second, start developing your own AI literacy. Learn the basics of how AI works, what its capabilities are, and what its limitations are. There are tons of great resources available online, from free courses to articles and videos. Become an informed consumer of AI so you can make informed decisions about its use. Got it. Anything else? And finally, Start engaging in conversations about the ethical and societal implications of AI. Talk to your colleagues, your friends, your family. The more we talk about these issues, the better equipped we'll be to shape the future of AI in a way that benefits everyone. So don't just wait for the future to happen. Be an active participant in shaping it. That's a great point. And I think it leads perfectly into the final question I want to explore in this deep dive. We've talked about the big picture, the potential impacts, the things we need to consider. But what does all this mean for me? As an individual, what does it mean for the listener? Okay, so we talked about a lot, you know, from the technical details of superintelligence mm -hmm. to the potential impacts on society and the workforce and all that. But I think the question that's probably on everyone's mind is, what does this all mean for me? Like, how will superintelligence actually affect my life, my right. job, my future? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's one that I think everyone needs to grapple with on a personal level. It's easy to get caught up in these abstract discussions about AI and all that. But ultimately... This is going to touch each of our lives in very real and tangible ways. So how do we even begin to wrap our heads around that? It feels so big, you yeah, know, it, so unknowable. It is big. And there are definitely a lot of unknowns. But I think one way to approach it is to think about how AI is already impacting your life today. Just look mm -hmm. around you. The recommendations you see online, the navigation apps you use, even the way your email filters spam. It's all powered by AI. Yeah, that's true. We are already surrounded by AI, even yeah. if we don't always realize it. Exactly. And superintelligence is really just the next step in that evolution. It's mm -hmm. about AI becoming more sophisticated, huh. more capable, more integrated into like every aspect of our lives. Okay, so if we're already living in a world shaped by AI, how is superintelligence going to be any different? What's the big shift that we need to be prepared for? I think the key difference is the level of autonomy and decision-making power that superintelligent AI will have. Right now, AI is mostly used for narrow tasks, like playing chess or translating languages. But superintelligence will be able to tackle much more complex problems, make decisions with far-reaching consequences, and even learn and adapt in ways that we can't fully predict. That's kind of both exciting and a little bit unsettling, right? It's like we're handing over the reins to something we don't fully understand. It is. And that's why it's so crucial that we develop a deep understanding of AI, not just the technology itself, but also its ethical implications, its potential biases, and the ways in which it could be misused. So it's not enough to just be a passive consumer of AI. We need to become active participants in shaping its development. Exactly. We need to be asking tough questions about how we want AI to be used, what values we want it to reflect, and what safeguards we need to put in place to ensure that it benefits humanity as a whole. So what can we do as individuals to prepare for this future? It feels like such a massive shift. Where do we even begin? Well, I think the first step is to cultivate a mindset of lifelong learning. The world is changing so rapidly, and the ability to adapt and acquire new skills will be more important than ever before. So embrace new technologies, explore different fields, and never stop learning. So basically become a learning machine ourselves to keep up with the learning machines. Exactly. And along with that, develop your critical thinking skills. Don't just accept everything you hear about AI at face value. Question assumptions, evaluate evidence, and form your own opinions. 
Be discerning consumers of information, especially in a world where AI is generating more and more of that information. Precisely. And finally, don't be afraid to get involved in the conversation. Talk to your friends, your family, your colleagues about these issues. Engage with policymakers, attend conferences, join online forums. The more voices we have in this conversation, the better chance we have of shaping the future of AI in a way that benefits everyone. So it's not just a spectator sport. We all have a role to play in shaping this AI-powered future. Absolutely. And I think that's ultimately the most important takeaway from all of this. Mm. The future of AI is not predetermined. It's being shaped right now mm. by the choices we make, mm -hmm. the conversations we have, the actions we take. That's a powerful thought. It puts the responsibility, but also the opportunity squarely in our hands. Exactly. So to all our listeners out there, I encourage you to embrace the challenge, to dive in, to explore, to create. The future is waiting to be written and you have a pen in your hand. That's a great way to put it. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And remember, the future is what we make it.